Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Will Ole Gunnar Solskjaer still be in charge for the game against Watford after the international break? Well, I hope he's not in charge for the game against Watford. Hopefully, Manchester United will sack Solskjaer during the international break. There's more fans calling for him to go after the defeat to Manchester City at Old Trafford. After the defeat to Manchester City, Solskjaer did admit that Man United were outclassed by Man City. He also said the defeat to City was a big step backwards. Manchester United capitulated against Man City. Manchester United have only won one of their last six Premier League games. Solskjaer should have been sacked after the 5-0 defeat to Liverpool a couple of weeks ago. I think if Solskjaer cared about the club, he would resign. Revert back to what I've mentioned on my recent videos, but Solskjaer is not going to resign. Manchester United will have to pay Solskjaer £7.5 million when they sack him. Because in the summer, Solskjaer signed a new contract with the club until 2024. There's an option of a further year. And Manchester United certainly made a mistake giving him that contract and a lot of United fans will agree with me on that aspect. The players are just not playing for Solskjaer. I believe that the players have given up on Solskjaer and Solskjaer is also losing a lot of fans. Now, I've been talking with you about Brendan Rodgers today. Brendan Rodgers has verbally agreed to take over as Manchester United's new manager. As Solskjaer is set for the sack. There is some United fans that would like to see Brendan Rodgers come in. You know, Brendan Rodgers is a far superior manager to Solskjaer. Um, it's beneficial as well because Brendan Rodgers is proven in the Premier League. Mark Ogden said earlier on this season that Brendan Rodgers is a potential replacement for Solskjaer. I think if Rodgers came in, you know, he'd get us back to that level where we should be at and he would suit the strappings of the club and I think he would get the best out of these group of players. You've got to admire the work that Brendan Rodgers has done at Leicester. Leicester haven't been great though so far this season. But revert back to Rodgers, you know, Rodgers has won the Community Shield and the FA Cup with Leicester so far. And he's been in charge of Leicester for almost three years. He's got a contract with Leicester until 2025. He's managed quite a lot of clubs, has he? You know, before Leicester, he was at Celtic. He enjoyed a few years with them and he won quite a few trophies. You know, he's managed Liverpool before. He enjoyed one good season at Liverpool. But he didn't win anything at Liverpool. But Liverpool came very close to winning the title under Rodgers. At Liverpool, though, Brendan Rodgers emulated the football that he produced at Swansea. Uh, Rodgers was also a very good manager when he was at Swansea. He managed Reading a long time ago, also managed Watford, and he managed Chelsea's youth a while ago. Um, there's a lot of United fans that would like 
to see Zinedine Zidane come in. Uh, Zinedine Zidane has not yet managed in the Premier League, so it would be good to see Zinedine Zidane come and experience the Premier League. You know, if he came to the Premier League, would he replicate what he did in Spain with Real Madrid? Because when Zinedine Zidane was Real Madrid manager, he won, you know, a lot of trophies. So, reflecting on that, he's got a good pedigree behind him. Zidane left Real Madrid in the summer. Manchester United have already held talks with Zinedine Zidane and reports from Spain said not so long ago that Zidane rejected the Newcastle job as he's waiting for the Man United or France job. But reports from Spain did say earlier on this season that Zidane is not interested in becoming Manchester United manager as it mentioned that he's enjoying life away from football management. Uh, Ralph Rangnick, um, he's also been mentioned in the last couple of days. Apparently, he's interested in taking over at Man United. I heard that he could come in as the interim manager until the end of the season. Uh, Potocino's still being spoken about. Uh, Potocino's highly rated by Ferguson. Potocino is PSG's boss at the moment. Uh, we tried to get Potocino... Uh, when he was managerless, you know, Potocino held talks with the club and that. I thought Potocino did very, very well in his five and a half years at Tottenham, despite him not winning anything, and I think Tottenham made a big mistake getting rid of him. Um, Eric Ten Hag, uh, there's some United fans that would take him. Uh, you've got to admire the work he's done at Ajax. Uh, Roberto Mancini was also mentioned yesterday as well. He's a former Manchester City manager. I was disappointed that Manchester United didn't get Conte because that's who I wanted in. Conte is obviously Tottenham's manager now. If we would have sat Solskjaer after that 5-0 defeat to Liverpool, I can assure Manchester United would have got Antonio Conte. But in regards to Solskjaer, I think he's been given long enough now at Manchester United. He's been Manchester United manager for almost three years. Reflecting how long he's been at the club, he has gained some managerial experience and he's learned quite a bit on the job. But there's still plenty of things Ollie's got to learn because he's still a young coach. You know, this season is Solskjaer's third full season as Man United manager. And I did mention at the start of this season that this season was going to be massive for Solskjaer because he's got big expectations to exceed. But like I've said before, the expectations are far too high for Solskjaer to exceed as Man United manager. And Solskjaer has lowered the standards at the club as manager and he is in a position that he shouldn't be in of course we all wanted Solskjaer to succeed as Man United manager but obviously he's not going to you know Solskjaer's not capable of winning trophies as United manager you know Solskjaer hasn't even won a trophy as Man United manager and we haven't won a trophy since 2017 But we all adore Solskjaer a lot, you know, reflecting on what he's done for the club. At the end of the day, he is a club legend. He endured 11 years as a player for Man United. He flourished under Sir Alex Ferguson's guidance. And Ole had a proven pedigree when he was a player because he won a lot of trophies as a player for Man United. But unfortunately, Solskjaer has no proven pedigree as a manager. Solskjaer's just clueless, you know, his decision making is a big concern as well because analysing the vast majority of the games he's managed at Man United, he's been tactically naive. And Solskjaer ran out of excuses a long time ago now, didn't he? Because Man United endured a very good summer transfer window this year, you know, spent around one hundred and forty one million pounds, made four signings. 
you know, Solskjaer received very strong backing from the board. Oli's enjoyed like five transfer windows now as permanent Man United manager. Man United have spent over 400 million under the Solskjaer era. Uh, Man United have got a very good squad, and I did mention it's a title winning squad, so in reality, Man United should be winning the Premier League or at least challenging for the league. We haven't won the league since 2013, but one of the biggest problems are is that Man United don't actually play as a team. They're a team of individuals, like a lot of pundits have spoke about this season. But you've got the likes of City, Liverpool and Chelsea that all play as a team, and that explains why they're in a much better position than Manchester United. So there you go. But like I've said to you so many times before, reflecting on the poor performances and poor results, not all of the blame stems from the manager. There's also players that have to take responsibility for those poor performances and poor results. Oli got appointed in in December 2018. He's been permanent Manchester United manager since March 2019. You know, when Solskjaer sat, he will be the fourth permanent manager to be sat since Ferguson because Man United have already sat three managers since Ferguson. Sat Moyes after 10 months. We finished seventh under the Moyes era. One of the worst managers we've had. We sat Louis van Gaal. We won the FA Cup under him now. And we sat Jose Mourinho. Uh, Mourinho did enjoy one good season at Man United because he won three trophies in his first season. I think Mourinho got us a second place finish in his second season. No one's going to replicate what Ferguson did at Man United. You know, Ferguson brought success to Manchester United. He won 30 odd trophies, including 13 Premier League titles. But Fergie didn't settle in straight away because he didn't win out in his first four years at Man United. It's a good job he didn't get sacked any time in that four years. He didn't win anything because Man United wouldn't have had any success now. And Ferguson was also a very long-serving manager. He enjoyed a 27-year managerial tenure. But it has all gone wrong since Ferguson retired. And a lot of United fans predicted it was all going to go wrong. But um, players are leaving Manchester United next year, as you all know. Martial's going next year. I think Cavani's going next year. I think Matt's going next year. Lingard's going next year. Van der Beek's going next year because he isn't getting enough game time at Man United. Matic is going next year. Uh, looks like Pogba's leaving on a free next summer. Because uh, Pob has already said that he wants out and he's refused to sign a new contract. Mark Ogden did say earlier on this season that Man United are prepared to let Pob leave on a free transfer next summer after accepting that the midfielder will not sign a contract. Pogba's current contract at Man United expires next summer. Before the start of this season, Pogba rejected a new Man United contract offer. Well, apparently contract talks got put on hold because it said Pogba snubbed Solskjaer after the 5-0 defeat to Liverpool. And then obviously Paul Pogba denied it. Pogba got sent off for a two-footed challenge on Naby Keita. In the 5-0 defeat to Liverpool. Pogba got a free match ban. He's now got one game to serve. Out of that free match ban he got. Um, I think Telez is leaving Man United next year as well. I think Jones and Bailly are leaving next year. I think Delot's leaving next year. And I think Dean Henderson will be going out on loan next year. So there you go. <clears throat>
obviously there will be a lot of players staying um, at Manchester United. Um, of course, David De Gea will be staying for at least this season. I've got to give David De Gea credit. He's done really, really well so far this season. Uh, De Gea was recently in goal for the game against Man City. And, yeah, De Gea was partly to blame for Man City's second goal. But De Gea made some fantastic saves in that first half. So, if it weren't for De Gea, it would have been another humiliation. Don't forget De Gea reclaimed the number one spot back um, in the summer. De Gea decided to cut short his holiday by two weeks to fight for the starting place. And you know De Gea said he's determined to fight for his Man United future. This season is De Gea's 11th season at Man United, so he's been a long serve and he's been with us since the Ferguson era. So he's remained loyal to the club for a very long time. Uh, De Gea's won everything domestically at the football club and he's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. He's got under two years left on his contract and he receives £375,000 a week. Um... And Wan Bissaka, um, he's obviously staying at Manchester United. I think he'll be with us long term. And Wan Bissaka was recently poor against Man City, but that was a shame because in recent weeks he's been in scintillating form. I thought Bissaka played well in the two-two draw against that Atlanta, and he played well in the three-nil win against Tottenham last weekend. These aspects of Anne wan Bissaka's game, that's got to improve. He's got to get forward more. His positioning's got to improve. Perhaps his crossing's got to improve a bit more. So there you go. But defensively, I'd say he's always been good. This season is Anne wan Bissaka's third full season at Man United, isn't it? We got Anne wan Bissaka in a deal worth £50 million from Palace back in the summer of 2019. Obviously, Varane is staying at Manchester United. Uh, Varane is a good centre-half. I think he's done well in quite a lot of games since he come to Man United. He's had a couple of games always looked off the pace. Varane is out with a hamstring injury now. He's out for a month. Because Varane came off injured in the first half against Atalanta and he got replaced by Mason Greenwood. Varane only just come back from a groin injury not so long ago. He was out with that groin injury for a few weeks. Varane initially made his return against Tottenham last weekend and he did put a good performance out. You know, looked well composed, showed the ability to play out from the back, effective in the air. You know, Manchester United got Varane in a deal worth £41 million. We've had ons included. He's got a contract with Man United till 2025 and there's an option of a further year. Varane to Man United was official just before kick-off against Leeds, which was the opening day. But he's regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. He's highly experienced. He's got a good pedigree behind him. Look at the amount of silverware he won. Uh, when he was at Real Madrid, and he was also a long-serving player when he was at Real Madrid. Um, Harry Maguire, I think he'll be staying at Manchester United. Um, I don't know how long for, but I don't think he'll leave next year. But his performances have been very, very bad this season. He's been poor since he come back from that calf injury. The best game I'd say Maguire's had so far this season was the game against Tottenham last weekend. 
Don't forget, uh, Maguire was a miss for Man United towards the end of last season because he had ligament damage in his ankle. Man United overpaid for Harry Maguire, got him in a deal worth £80 million, so he's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and the second most expensive signing at the club. Uh, Lindelof, um, not too sure about him, could be staying at Manchester United. Um, you know, Lindelof may be here next season. I want Lindelof to go, though, because I don't think he's good enough to represent the club. I can't understand why Solskjaer prefers Lindelof ahead of Eric Bailly. Lindelof's been at Manchester United for like four and a half years now. Uh, we got Lindelof from Benfica back in 2017 for £31 million. Uh, I think Luke Shaw's going to be staying at Manchester United, uh, despite him being out of form this season. Luke Shaw recently played in the Manchester derby. Oh, he was very, very poor. Luke Shaw was the main culprit for Man City's second goal by Bernardo Silva. Luke, the best game Luke Shaw's had this season was the 3-0 win against Tottenham last weekend. Where's the Luke Shaw from last season? Because last season, Luke Shaw was absolutely superb. Absolutely superb. Last season, he was far superior to how he has been so far this season. You know, Luke Shaw has been our first choice left back for a while and he still remains our first choice left back despite the arrival of Telez. You know, Shaw's been at Manchester United for, what, seven and a half years now, so he's been a long-serving player. He's got under two years left on his contract. Uh, by the way, I think Shaw's got an injury now. He came off injured against Man City. Obviously, he had to get replaced by Alex Tellez. Fred, I think he'll be staying at Manchester United for this season. Possibly could be gone by next season. I don't think Fred's good enough to represent me, represent the club. I've got my reservations about him. I haven't heard any rumours about Fred leaving yet. Um, a while ago, though, he was subjected to some chance for speculation. We got Fred in a deal worth £50 million from Shakhtar Donetsk. I've got to make an admission regarding Fred. I think he was an exceptional player during his time in Ukraine. McTominay, um, I think he'll be staying at Manchester United. I think McTominay does need more time at the club because he's still young, got a lot of development in him. He's been part of the club for a long time as it stands. And he has had his good games at Manchester United, but had his bad games as well. Just after the first lockdown last year, McTominay signed a five-year contract. So reflecting on that, he committed his future to the club. Um, Fred and McTominay play alongside each other in a lot, a lot of games for Man United and Solskjaer has been criticised for persistently selecting Fred and McTominay in the centre and midfield. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, obviously he's going to be staying at Manchester United, um, maybe with his long term. Well, earlier on this season, Fernandez did make it clear that he wants to stay at Manchester United. And when he came to Manchester United, he said, I've come to Manchester to win trophies. Uh, Fernandez recently played in the 2-0 defeat to Man City. And I thought he was very poor in that game. You know, looks very sloppy, looks lost for ideas and gave the ball away a lot of times. Oh, there's been quite a few games where Fernandez has looked off the pace. But there again, he's been consistent in a lot of games for Man United. He starts the vast majority of Manchester United's games. You know, Fernandez has been a Manchester United player for almost two years now. We got him from Sporting Lisbon back in January 2020. Last season, he won Player of the Year and he's won Player of the Month quite a few times, reflecting on his good performances. Fernandez has got a contract with Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further 12 months.
but he's one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. Mason Greenwood. Um, yeah, he'll be staying at Manchester United. I reckon he's going to be with us long term. Uh, Greenwood played recently against Man City. Um, he was actually playing alongside Ronaldo, but that partnership doesn't work out. Uh, Greenwood didn't start against that Atlanta, but he came on for the injured Rafael Varane. Um, he got an assist against Atalanta. Greenwood scored a stunning goal in the 4-2 defeat to Leicester earlier on this season. Greenwood scored four goals in the Premier League so far this season. Um, at one point, though, Greenwood did go a while without scoring. Greenwood made his senior debut for Man United back in 2019. He's been a United player since the age of seven, and last season Greenwood signed a new four-year contract. Uh, Jaden Sancho... Yeah, I think he'll be staying at Manchester United for at least the rest of this season. I don't know if Sancho's going to be with us long term, though. Because there's quite a few games that Sancho doesn't even play in. But Sancho hasn't enjoyed a great start to his Manchester United career. And fans have obviously been getting on his back reflecting on that. I think Solskjaer has been to blame for Sancho's poor performances because when Solskjaer decides to play Sancho, he persistently plays him out of position. You know, he puts him on that left wing. Yes, he can play on the left wing, but Sancho's far superior on the right wing because the right wing is Sancho's predominant position. Sancho can also play through the middle. Um, I said Sancho will do well at Man United, providing that he's used correctly. It does take some players' time to settle in. Uh, Sancho did recently come on against City, to be fair, though, and he did make an impact. Sancho endured four good years with Borussia Dortmund. Uh, we got Sancho in a deal worth £78 million with add-ons included. You know, he's got a contract with Man United till June 2026. <clears throat> And Cristiano Ronaldo, obviously, he's going to be staying at Manchester United. Yes, he could possibly see out his contract. Maybe he won't see out his contract. You know, Ronaldo's got a contract with Man United till 2023. There's an option of a further year, and Ronaldo receives £480,000 a week, so he's the highest earner at Man United at the moment. Ronaldo wears the number 7 shirt, doesn't he? And we got Ronaldo for £19.8 with add-ons included. You know, Ronaldo is the best player in the world overall. Uh, but Ronaldo is becoming angry with Man United and, you know, he's taking the mick out of Solskjaer, you know, with his tactics and that. Um, in the game against City recently, yes, Ronaldo played. He was anonymous in that game, though, because he hardly got any service. You know, Ronaldo did have two good chances, though, in the game. Uh, Ronaldo saved Solskjaer in the 2-2 draw against Atalanta because Ronaldo scored twice in that game at the end of both halves. Ronaldo also scored the winner in the reverse fixture against Atalanta at Old Trafford. Uh, Ronaldo scored the winner against Villarreal earlier on this season as well and he also scored a very good volley against Tottenham last weekend. He had a goal disallowed in the game against Tottenham and he did get an assist an assist against Tottenham. That's his first assist since he's re-signed for Man United. Ronaldo has scored nine goals in all competitions so far since he re-signed. Recently, uh, Ronaldo got named Manchester United's Player of the Month for October. So that's back-to-back -back awards now because Ronaldo got named Premier League Player of the Month for September. Ronaldo's won 32 major trophies in his playing career and he's got five Ballon d'Ors. <clears throat> uh, Marcus Rashford, obviously he'll be staying at Manchester United. 
I think Rashford probably will be with us long term. You know, he's a good player, Rashford. You know, since he's come back, he's had some good games. But on the other side of things, he's had some bad games as well. Uh, Rashford came on against City recently. Didn't do too bad. He was poor in the 2-2 draw against that Atlanta. He didn't start against Tottenham last weekend, but he come on as a substitute and scored the third goal. It was a good breakaway goal as well. Um... You know, Rashford scored against that Atlanta at Old Trafford. He also scored in his comeback against Leicester. Don't forget, Rashford was out with a shoulder injury for a while and at one point he had to have an operation on his shoulder. Rashford's been part of the club for a long time. He's been a United player since the age of seven and he's been in our senior squad since 2016. Rashford's got a contract to Man United till 2023. So there you go. Um, there will be more videos coming up tomorrow, guys. Uh, by the way, I have now got two hundred subscribers. I'd like you. I'd like to thank you all for you know following me on this channel for the last what four years now, is it? So take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very very soon.